Welcome to Dream, Believe, Achieve. I'm Coach Wanda, and I'd like to introduce to you Foster Anderson, president and founder of Shared Adventures. Hi there, Wanda. How are you? Good, good. So, Foster, I was um, doing a little bit of research and, and learning more about what you've done with your life. And it all began, I guess, when you were 17 years old and you had an accident. Can you tell us about that? Yes. Well, I was in between my junior and senior year in high school. And I loved getting around on a motorcycle. That was just my uh, independence and just love riding that bike. So um, I was uh, waiting for my girlfriend to get off of work and she uh, was gonna have, I was gonna have the truck in the truck reserved out for my dad's truck. I just got my license. So I ended up um, going for a ride later on on my bike and I was going down a well-known railroad trail that I go down and I didn't see the railroad tie. Mm. So I was about, I was going through about, I was going on 35 miles an hour and my front wheel hit, my back wheel hit. I didn't even know what happened and uh, landed on my head, fractured my um, cervical fifth and sixth vertebrae. And you know, I, there is the cinder block or the cinder rocks all down my back. I woke up in the hospital probably two weeks later, I guess. And that's when um, my sister, who came in from Colorado, uh, got on the floor. I was on a striker frame with 35 pounds of traction bolted to my head. Wow. And uh, I, they were flipping me over every two hours. So, you know, I could feel my feet kind of falling to the ground or to my knees. And she was, he came down um, on the floor. I was dripping saliva into a basin on the floor. Um, you know, I was in a coma. So people would come in and, you know, I hit my head so hard. It just wasn't, you know, that's what happened. But if it wasn't for her to come down, because when she did, I caught eye of her because either it was straight down looking into the bathroom or straight up looking into the lights. And when she came down, she was foster. I'm like, hey, you know. Um, and so she knew I was there. And she went and she got a basket of cherries and she started feeding them to me. Aww. That was like my first taste of real food, you know, like in two weeks or whatever it was. So then all of a sudden I got other people coming down and, you know, checking in with me. And it, it was a long trail from there, a good seven months in the hospital. Um, wow. Being um, stopped, I stopped breathing three times. My heart stopped for six seconds. Um, I had an out-of-body experience. I, um, my first time out of the hospital months later was to see the Grateful Dead play. And that's when wow. I knew I was going to survive. And, but each day was, you know, just a breath I had to take. And it was like the wind got knocked out of me. It wow. did. You know, and, but I had a tracheotomy in my throat. So that was keeping me alive. But you don't want that and you're, you know, relying on that the whole time. So I had to breathe on my own. And, you know, it took months to be able to do that. I am just so grateful to be alive now. I had another plane of existence to explore. And at 17, I had a lot to accomplish and 
and learn and grow and and that's what I set out to do. And my mom would come read to me every day from a book called My Second Life. I'm sorry, um, that's my book. Um, uh, my The Other Side of the Mountain. It was about a skier that broke her neck and came back to tell about it. So that was her, my mother's comfort to figure out like, wow, here's somebody that survived this. And it was her just being there, reading to me um, of me being, wanting, wanting to be alive. Wow, that's so awesome. Uh, you know, and you know that I have a daughter who's disabled, who's quadriplegic. So just um, in some of the videos and doing the research and talking with you, it's just so inspiring to see what you've gone through. And I know that, um, and one of the things I saw, you said that you've been resurrected into a second life in a wheelchair. And so, you know, as a mom of a daughter who's 29 years old and disabled quadriplegic, you know, I, I just, I want to ask you, it's like, at what point did, did you become in the frame of mind of life goes on, I can do this? Was it right away? What happened? Because, you know, I saw so much support with my family coming up, my friends that we do so much together, you know, it's just, we were inseparable. So they would come up all the time. And it was the music that we used to listen to, too. You know, Marshall Tucker Band, Grateful Dead, oh, wow. Brothers. Yeah. So they would leave that a tape and I, they would, I would listen to it after everyone left. So that was, you know, my like, wow, I love music, you know? How cool. And it was my, I didn't want to die at 17. And what's really ironic about this is Ann Landers, remember Ann Landers? Oh yeah, yeah. My mom would put her article on my bed if she wanted me to or learn something that she didn't want to tell me or whatever like drugs or who knows what it was or just to get me reading because I was very mm -hmm. not much into reading I just I think ADD or something whatever uh -huh. so there was an article of somebody sent in and it was somebody that died and she, you know, was in a car accident, but she had been drinking and didn't want to die at that age. And she was 17 and it, she was kind of telling it like she was alive now and that if she had to do it all over again, she would do it different and how she didn't and now she's gone. So I thought of that, like, man, I would not want to be that person, you know, or have that happen to me, like either drinking and driving or, and I never did. I, you know, my motorcycle yeah. was, you know, I was very conscious about how I drove and where I drove, but that railroad tide, just somebody put it in the middle of the tracks for some reason. Yeah, it was in the summer, so I didn't blend it in with the tracks. But I was, you know, wanting to survive and 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 do everything I wanted to do. So, so how did you? Um, at what point did you decide to start this wonderful program <laughs> that you've headed up for how many years now? Yeah, well, it's funny because there's two times I had the chance to do it or did it. Um, a teacher, and he recently came back from Colorado and saw me and said, hey, I was in Colorado at Breckenridge, and it's called the Colorado Outdoor Educational Center for the Handicap, and they have sit skis that you ski sitting down, and this was in 1985. 
And I'm like, well, I'm a, I was a skier. I was looking for an adventure. So I said, sure, I'll be the guinea pig. And we <laughs> got together and wrote a grant to have them come out with their sit skis and ski the same slopes that I skied when I was younger. We got volunteers to help um, tether us down the hill. So the perfect scenario of them getting school credit for um, taking us sit skiing. At, one, at some point you decided to start uh, a day at the beach in Santa Cruz. A day on the beach. A day on the beach. Right. A day on the beach. And so um, could you could you tell me more about that? What what is what is the mission? Uh, what happens there? So I put together a uh, you know I wanted to celebrate my life because every year, you know, I felt like I was one year old. So my girlfriend was like, how can you celebrate this? And it's like, well, you know, I'm alive and here I am. And, yeah. And all the people that, that were in the hospital in the rehab unit, um, a lot of them had to go to a community hospital and live there. And I went home to this beautiful home that my dad, you know, built, well, he built, but he also um, designed, and we both designed the addition off the side of the um, the ranch house mm -hmm. and um, so I always you know I said dad let's have a barbecue in the backyard so I can invite my friends from the hospital so that was the first little gathering right around July 17th that is so cool <laughs> I was I was it happened July 17th 1978 and I was 17 so 17s are like my lucky favorite number so year after year, when another anniversary came around, I would invite my friends that helped me, you know, be where I am now. And, it, and so they're in the backyard and we'd have music. All my friends would set up music on the porch. And, and I was kind of like my own promoter. So each year they kept growing and growing. And I call them the Stork Fest. That's um, my nickname. <laughs> so um, to make a long story short, after moving to um, Oakland or, or Berkeley and then Oakland for three years, um, the, earthquake, the earthquake happened. And then I just wanted to move down to Santa Cruz. And Kent Winchester, who helped me start, well, he's the one that helped start Shared Adventures on the East Coast, uh -huh. um, said, well, you should, you should start it on the West Coast. Um, some surfers came in to the Adaptive PE program, and his name was Terry Sims, and he's a pro surfer, and he asked if anybody wanted to go surfing. You know, and I, we're just like, ooh. How exhilarating. Well, yeah, and it was so fun. Wow. It was just a blast. And but um I think that I think that people like um for myself as a mom, maybe your mom felt this way. I don't know. But it's like, you know, when when someone has a disability like yourself or like my daughter who's quadriplegic, we get so nervous, like, oh my gosh, they they can't they can't do this because what if they get hurt? You know, they can't, they can't keep themselves safe like we can. And, you know, and um, just simply holding your breath and, and knowing that if you hold your breath and you can pop back up and be fine, it's like, it, it's kind of weird. It's like, you know, that's all you had to do. Granted, there's other things involved. You know, that's all you had to do, but everybody freaks out. <laughs> well, it's funny because when you said that, after my accident, my mom was that, you know, there's no such word as can't, uh -huh. you know, because I said, oh, you know, I can't do this or I can't do that. And 
So she taught me that word, you know. And then as time went on, I figured out how to do it. You know, like pushing my chair uh -huh. and, you know, getting outside and, and pushing up the road and just determined to get stronger and, you know, getting better. And each day was different. Each day was, you know, plagued with whatever it was. And, um, you know, then after a while, it's just like, oh, I'm going to do this. And she's like, well, you can't do that. I'm like, wait a minute. You said there's no such word as can't. My first girlfriend, she was like, um, you know, taking this 50 pound chair, <laughs> lugging it in the back of her BW bug, picking me up, throwing me in the car. I'm like, yeah, we're out of here. So it's funny how some of us think, because when my daughter was younger, my husband and I put her in a life vest that has the flip up thing on the back yeah. um, for the head. And um, she couldn't go to a camp and, and, and water ski or sit ski or whatever, unless she could keep her head up in the water. And so we used to take her at a very young age and throw her in our pool uh, <laughs> so that she would get used to holding her head up so that she could eventually go to that camp, you know? But it's funny because him and I were okay with that. And she's tubed behind our boat and things like that, you know? But something about the ocean that's my own, uh, I have a block about it or something like, oh my gosh, put my daughter out in the ocean. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> but um, I'm sure she would love it. You know, yeah. it's just kind of weird. Some of the things that we all, um, I guess it's just kind of weird that I'm okay to have her behind the boat. I'm okay to have her in the pool. But then I think of her being in the ocean and I go, oh, wow. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. you so know? That's what's so cool about our day on the beach is, people come to that that didn't think they would be able to go uh -huh. kayaking or outrigger canoeing or scuba diving or floating in the water, you know? So after they do it, now they have a story to tell. And now, you know, they're that much more enlightened and um, they can tell their peers and their friends or whatever. And then, you know, they're usually saying, well, I've never done that before. And you did. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of them have gone on to get jobs or gone on like taking more of an incentive to do things that maybe they thought they couldn't do before. That's so cool. So that's, that's so my cool. mission in life is kind yeah. of being that um, role model, no pun intended. And yeah. Um, well, you're so inspiring. I just have to ask you, okay, so let's say my daughter or someone else who might be viewing this and be interested into a day on the beach, right? What does it look like when they get there? What happens when they get there? Tell us, tell us what happens from the beginning of the day till the end. Well, when you come in your car, you'll be greeted by somebody that will give you a map on where to park. And you can drop off your daughter and then you can go park your car. There's people there that will help register you in. So usually register ahead of time. And usually we have time slots. So, you know, you're not always waiting. And uh -huh. you, um, once you get um, a wristband and it'll tell you what activity you wanna do, and, and the time you're gonna do it, then you get a bag um, and it'll have sunscreen in it and, you know, brochure and stickers and you'll take that down. Um, there's a ramp down to the beach and we lay down 200 sheets of plywood. Wow. So the wheelchair users can get on the beach. And we'll have music playing. Um, the Sai Baba group will be there to give away um, food. This sounds so awesome. A thousand samosas, you know, over 900 sandwiches. Oh, wow. It's a big festival. That is so cool. You'll see the wharf on your left. You'll see the bay 
you'll see it's going to be a beautiful day, of course. And it's always the perfect temperature. And it's just like, it seems like that day is always, um, people say my favorite days of the year, my birthday, Christmas, and <laughs> day at the beach. You know? you know what? This just fires me up because I watched some of your videos and I saw all the people building those huge platforms to get people out there on the beach. It was amazing. I've never seen anything like that. And of course, again, because I have my own daughter, I'm like, oh my gosh. And you know what else I think is amazing is that my husband and I have been so involved in her life and being on committees and board of directors and things that have to do with disabilities. And yet there's still so much that we don't know about. Do you know what I mean? And so yeah. To see what you have done there in Santa Cruz and the way it has changed lives, not just for the disabled people, it gets me choked up, but for the volunteers as well. Oh my God, it's amazing. You're just so inspiring. I, I just have to tell you that. Um, I want to go. <laughs> uh -huh. I want my daughter to go. So you guys do this once a year? This event, yes. And it's done and in July, I think? going to be July 9th this year. Very good. Um, there'll be character artists. So you'll get, you can get a, a really cool drawing of, you know, you and your family. Oh, nice. Day. Um, and we're celebrating our 30th year. Wow. Yeah. 30 years, huh? So, yeah. Well, we started it. I, I, my first day on the beach was in 1992. Wow. So when I was in San Diego, there was an access guide there and it shows all the accessible, you know, resources that are available. And it was filled with like ads and not much information. And I thought I could make something so much better than that. Uh -huh. So we did. And you'll see it's called the SC access guide. Uh -huh. um, wow, that is awesome. So it's sccaccessguide.com. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's that's got a awesome. New brochure out. Uh huh. So that came into print. Um, that's wonderful. Uh, yesterday. So. Yeah. So I got to ask you, I'm sure you've had people show up to a day on the beach and you've had people who were scared to go out into the ocean. Yeah. I mean, is there a story that you could share with us where someone went out and came back and was just like, oh my gosh. I mean, I'm sure you have many of them, but. Yeah, well, yes. And um, this person was a quad also one level up above me and he actually was out in a kayak and he tumbled out because the waves um, had him, you know, wipe out. And, but still he was, it looked like he had seen the light for the first time. And he was like laughing and telling me, oh my God, we wiped out. And it was the coolest thing ever. So, oh, wow. so he always prides that from us. And he just recently passed away, Aww. fortunately. Um, and his mom and his friend came down to give me something. Mm -hmm. And it was the most touching gift I've ever had. Wow. And, um, it was all his Day on the Beach t-shirts. Um, in a quilt Aww. and you know I'm like wow the last time you know 10 times he was there so I mean she goes you can put this up in your office that is so cool going home. but um yeah it was really meaningful to me to have that and so you must you must totally feel as though your life has so much purpose I mean, the the second life resurrected in a wheelchair, it just seems like, 
I mean, do you feel like it was totally meant to be that you're being used to help so many others? And yeah, I would never say that like beforehand, but like I said, it's just like, I never wanted to be in this situation yet. You got to make, you know, milk out of honey or whatever it is. So I try to, you know, be optimistic and, you know, but it can be challenging because there's times when I'm stuck and there's times when things fall on the floor and things aren't always rosy. Like, right, it's not like I'm complaining. There's a lot of work that comes into being in the position I'm in. Yeah. I used to go on all the activities and, you know, now, you know, I have to hire an art activities coordinator for all the, the events and, you know, and it's, but if it wasn't for, you know, Becky, who's our activities coordinator, Steve Miller, who has been on our board chair for 24 years, um, Dara Wise, who's our publication director, and Cecily, who's our outreach or volunteer coordinator for Day on the Beach. And all these people have been with me almost since the beginning of time. Wow. So it, it's not just me, it's a compilation of so many people that believe in what I do. It, it's, it's, so I gotta ask you, uh, like, for example, I know there are some people who are more limited than others with physical abilities. Has there ever been a circumstance where someone shows up at a day on the beach and it was just too difficult for them to participate in anything? Yeah, I mean, it's not for everyone. Not everyone wants to go do this. Mm -hmm. So it's just being there and enjoying the day. It sounds okay. like so much fun. Yeah. Oh. I know my daughter would love to do the kayaking or, or even the surfing. I don't know. To... No surfing anymore. No. That stopped in like 2000 because we just didn't have enough beach wheelchairs anymore. Oh, okay. And yeah. So. So if we have viewers out there that would love to participate at a day on the beach, uh, how would they go about? Or any of the other activities that we have. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You guys have quite a few, don't you? Because you're actually shared adventures which is more than just a day on the beach, if you want to share a little bit about right. some of oh, the yeah. other things. So another amazing event that happens once a year is called Camp Adventures. And it's four days, three nights up in Livermore. And kids and their families can go. Um, and there's Olympic-sized pool. There is a climbing wall. There is a zip line. Um, you get three meals a day. Um, there is an amphitheater for music. There is horseback riding. There is archery. There is bocce ball, and it's all free for the parents and the participants. So. Yeah. So That's like, like if my husband and my daughter and I wanted to go to that camp, would all three of us be able to go and attend that together? As long as your daughter is less than 20 years old, I think it is. Oh, okay. That's okay. the age requirement. Oh, okay. You got to be less than 20 years old. Okay. So yeah. basically, so, okay. So you got the, a day on the beach, you got the camping in Livermore. What else? Are there others? Well, once a month, we go sailing on the Nomad. Oh, nice. um, once a month, well, we go up to Ananuevo to see the elephant seals. Um, that's coming up in March. Uh, we have a numerous um, Zoom uh, classes, like adaptive, like dance class, you can dance along, there's art classes, and the teacher will send you what you need. And that's all done via Zoom? Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, go to shareadventures.org, get put on the 
registration or the newsletter or email list. And on Sunday nights, you'll get a full week of activities almost five to six days a week. You'll see it. But we have um, archery, um, roller skating, horse horse uh, back riding, pool parties, um, hikes in the um, hikes in the redwoods, uh, whale watching, uh, movies and concerts, uh, train rides up, nice. in, up in the redwoods, and uh, museum trips. Go down the Monterey Bay Aquarium. All expenses paid. Wow. You know, bus, the bus picks us up. But that's all like pending after two years of, you know, this COVID thing. Well, you said that you you have quite a few people who have been a great support network since the beginning. But through all this, I would imagine you've made a whole lot of new friends. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what keeps me going and and also people that know of me and tell me oh like last week I had to go to the doctors and my ear was hurting and the doctor I never met her before and she goes oh I know you from uh, Upper Crust Pizza in 1992 and 93 and like that's when I started being the dean, <laughs> and here she is being a doctor now. Oh wow! So it's so cool to see how people, you know, over the years of, you know, this is where they are now, or like one of my um, administrative assistants, or they go on to be um, an occupational therapist now, a doctor. Martha, she. Loved what I did, so she learned more, and now she's an occupational therapist. Same with my friend Allison and my friend Amy, who's living in the Bay Area now. She works for another nonprofit. So Bay you, Area. you said that you resurrected another life, a second life in a wheelchair, but yet you've helped so many people resurrect another life of their own yeah. and it's so cool uh so so if people want to sign up for these activities they just go to shared adventures yeah sharedadventures.org same with volunteers that want to get our newsletter sharedadventures.org yeah and um and the same so if people want to sign up for the activities go to sharedadventures.org and yeah. if people want to sign up to volunteer they can do the same thing yeah There's, um most people that have been with me now have been with me for 20 years or more. And it's nice to have that, you know, stability. You know, so nice. And my family, you know, they because of technology, they can text me and send me pictures. And, mm -hmm. and Facebook is also another great one. Mm -hmm. Keep in touch with us. And we tried starting um you know, Instagram and Twitter, so people can keep in touch whatever way. Mm -hmm. Go check out those also. Another great way. Well, I can assure you that we're going to be um, meeting you this year when you have your event. I'm excited great. about it. And um, I just thank you for coming on with us. You are so inspiring and you've made such an impact in this world. And I just want to thank you for that. It's so important, you know. Yeah. Um, so to all our viewers, I just thank you for watching today and um, never stop dreaming, believing and achieving. We'll be talking with you all soon.